make it up here. I want to see Philly representing this shit drop. AOG, I like it up here. I love it up here, man. with a rousing round of applause our beloved captain here Muhammad's Mosque number 12 in Philadelphia brother captain Gregory Tuat rap music fuck what people got to say I don't give a fuck Hip-hop is writing and rhyming. This is hip-hop music, and this is all we got. A way of life. To hold the mic in your hand and crush whoever's in front of you. That's hip-hop. You'll be going to get in. Uh-huh. You'll be burning back in, please. Come on. I'm like, Wait, stop, stop. Keep it down. You have no need to think that your instructions have already been sought out. If they ain't going to get me, and they ain't going to get me. It ain't like I can't be got. It's just going to be hard as fuck. If you don't have the proper identification, you will not be permitted to come in. Lock it down. I'm not leaving the ghetto shit. He said that's fly. Kids want to hear that. Brothers, people with tickets have no special privilege. We don't even know what we're going to do next. We got so many hits. And it was actually a piece of paper that saying that, saying he gave away his hits for a watch and a motherfucking chain. And just like a piece of chandelier, if it is not my stomach, what the exit gets between. They never had nothing to believe before they had records. They talked all that shit and then they did it. When money get involved in this shit, that's when niggas start making mistakes. The ones who did it and then talk shit, they don't want to do it. That you did personally use a firearm. Here comes the brand new flag, man, yeah. If I was not in the studio and not doing this shit right now and in this motherfucking trailer, you know what I'm saying, and doing this positive shit, I'll probably be right in your motherfucking house right now, tying your ass up in your fucking safe, slapping your kids around on the real. Brand new flavor. Come on. So all the wannabes tonight could have been, has been, gonna go in the bin. Brand new flavor. Assalamu alaikum. Brand new flavor. Brand new I've been to Rikers before, yeah. Yeah, but I ain't, you know, I ain't one of them niggas that like to visit people. They fucked up when they in jail. I got a, him, you know, they call collect on the phone. No, I'm not coming. I'll send you commissary, but I'm not coming. Once upon a time, not long ago, when people wore pajamas and lived life slow. I don't want to come visit no, no rappers in jail. I'm saying, for what? It sold a million, too. I, I wish, you know, I... I mean, it's supposed to be. I mean, I'm, I'm not no, no role model or nothing. I'm not trying to be, you know, but I don't think, you know, if you got all that success, you got it. You can't, you know, and I want, you know, I always tell artists, you know, it's all right to be, you know, to be real. Real is, you know, everybody say, I wish I got to where you got. If I got to where you got, I would not be throwing no guns in nobody's faces or robbing nobody or none of that. Or just, you just being in, somebody got to be for me, believe me, they could go. I'm only going to see Ricky because of the movie. I'm saying that's the only reason I'm can't cut, you gotta cut it out? Well, you should make it real. Come on, and, and you know, I don't understand. I'm older though, I'm 37 years old. I wanna chase, I wanna, you know, I wanna travel around the world and chase famous models. I'm still always gonna be ghetto. I'm too old not to be. You know what I'm saying? I'm who I am, but I ain't gotta do, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not broke, so I ain't gotta throw no guns in nobody's faces for nothing. I don't even wanna see no guns if I can help it. 
I got a Rolls Royce. I don't feel like hurting nobody. I don't want nobody near me with no type of drama. The only drama I want is Naomi Campbell. I'm not fucking with Ricky. I don't even know what he's going to talk about. I, a nigga called me four times. I missed each call. I don't know what he's going to He wants his jewelry. I know that much. That's kind of fly, you know. That's his ego talking. That's why his records is so dope. He'll tell you in a minute. All of them is crumbs, and they all want to be me. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, and you peasant poor pieces of trash. <laughs> Talking. You know, that's the type of shit he would say on his records. They all want to be him, the ruler. He used to play that shit. The ruler. The name is Slick Rick, the ruler. The rich ruler, by the way. Oh, man. Have you seen the pictures of him with the king hat on and the jewelry? He was as crazy as a bag of angel dust. I mean, personally, crazy. What's up, Daddy? You make it out in here, kid. Appreciate your freedom a lot more, you know. The little things, you know. You don't be so materialistic after afterwards. Stuff like that, you know. Appreciate family life, all that good stuff, you know. So when the album's supposed to drop? November the what? November 22nd, I think. November 22nd. That's perfect for that Christmas money. It's gonna be good. A lot of the music, as good as we think it is, or Warren G did a good job. It ain't 100% you, and people are waiting for your music. So when you come home, you know, we just, you know, want to see what you do on your own. I know you feel like it could be better. Hey, I don't got nothing against no, no producers. I mean, everybody got their props so they wouldn't be producers. You know what I'm saying? It's just that this man can't be me and I can't be him. You know what I'm saying? He might make good music like, like Warren G and Snoop. They got their own style. You know what I'm saying? And Pete Rock or then this one and that one, they got their style. And their shit sells when they work together with... But if you put this with this, sometimes it just don't mix, you know what I'm saying? We can't understand how when these kids get these opportunities, like, you know, they got this gift, they make these records, they get success. And instead of taking that success and, and doing the right thing, a lot of them take that success and, as, a, as a green light to go to hell, to do all the wrong shit. And that's, to me, is a shock. But I keep seeing it more and more. It's not to name any artists, but a lot of artists, even the ones that aren't in the news because of it, they, they got, they, with their hit record comes a lot of drama that they don't need. The country, the, the world is bugging out as it is, you know, Nick bros are just talking all type of mad stuff. I guess that's the way they feel like expressing themselves, but then when they have their shows and stuff, they got to live up to that image because they're drawing a crowd that's on some rah-rah. Yo, check it out, Slay for Brooklyn, represent.
Because I know how niggas is. When you in the streets and you hustling, you know how niggas is because you was one of them niggas, you know what I'm saying? You on the corner, you trying to get your money, you see a nigga roll a vine, a Benz or a Beamer, you know what I'm saying? You're like, fuck that nigga, you know what I'm saying? Fuck, I stop my murder that nigga, I robbed that nigga, you know what I'm saying? Now, I'm the nigga in the Benz and the Beamer, you know what I'm saying? Driving past other corners, so I know the same speech is coming out, you know what I'm saying? But it's all good, though. I ain't tripping. I'm that nigga. Prior to 13 years of age, he was um, he was just a, a, a son, a son that any mother would like. Mm -hmm. At 13, he became notorious. Uh -huh. And then when I started doing the music, and I started like slipping shit out the music and shit, she was like, I didn't know Christopher did this, and I didn't know he did that. She would always come in and see the drugs and shit, and I'd be like, it's Chico's. You know what I'm saying? My mom used to do some wild shit, man. Throw my work in the toilet. She used to put knives to Chico neck. Shit like that. Like, oh, it's just bugging, like. But it's like, it was nothing she could do to stop a nigga. Like, we would, I'd tell her I'm gonna stop, I ain't gonna fuck around no more. she kicked kick me out the crib. But I'd just, like, come back in, tell her I ain't doing it, and still be doing it. Ready to die was 95% the chronic, 5% of me. All the rest of that shit was the weed, man. All that suicidal thought shit, all that little extra shit that niggas ain't really supposed to be talking about, that was the weed talking, man. Blame that on a lot. It's censored on, on the radio. You don't hear, I think, what he's really saying. I, I wasn't really looking at it as like, well, how am I feeling right now? Well, I feel like killing myself. I'm going to write a rhyme about it. It wasn't like that. I was just thinking like, damn, I remember when I used to be stressed out in the same fucking room. You know what I'm saying? And like, it was to the point where I was like, I want to kill myself. I was just like, damn, my baby mom's stressing me. My mom's stressing me. You know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no money. I'm broke. The ab is hot and they can't get no money. A, a nigga just be like, yo. The fuck, if I was dead, I wouldn't have to worry about nothing. I could just, just lay up, either I'd be in heaven or hell, I'd just be laying the fuck up, just chilling. I wouldn't have to worry about no problems. That's what I was on. I wasn't on no killing myself shit. I was just saying if I was dead, I'd be a lot better off. And sometimes I still be feeling like that. See, all these fucking motherfuckers want to stress a nigga out over some bullshit, some rap shit. It's supposed to be fun. We introduce everybody, everybody you know. This is Warren G, you know what I'm saying? Has it gone platinum yet, Johnny? <laughs> it's platinum now. Almost double. Double. It'll right. be double by the end of the next week. <laughs> <laughs> Explain to them what double means, platinum. Two million records, you know, CDs, tapes. Okay. So. Hey, Warren G. Hey, Warren G. What? You gotta hurry me up, Cooley already on. I just want to be able to talk to somebody tonight. Once you get off schedule when you're doing one of these tours that are long distance tour, uh, tour dates over 500 miles per day, you got to be rolling. You got to be almost rolling like an express. And if you get off schedule, it's all, it's all fucked up. I forgot 5 o'clock, the black press wants to see him in the lobby. All right, the black press, that's important. We never see him. Ah. So I ain't gonna get to do nothing, huh? Let me quit. You can do it. This happens in every city, every, and then I ain't gonna No, this leave. doesn't happen in every city. Five footers in the house. This is a five foot session. Never's in the house, motherfucker. I'm not stressing. At my best, and on the microphone, it's me. The NEB, feeling I read. When I hit the split, I got to get to a bliff. Any nigga or nigga row with the fro in the back, yo. Pass the flow to my homegirl, Josh Hill. Beatboxing, cuz we're on the rail. So, what's up with the five foot? We can work this out, but what they don't like, so I guess they're gonna send in conditions. I guess they want the hairdresser. And I, I ain't paying for this shit. Come on, Warren. Every group has the hairdresser. I ain't paying for no no motherfucking hairdresser. If they want that shit, but be it, be my guest. Sorry, I, think, I, think, I think I'm gonna just say fuck them and change the motherfucker. We're the braided. They got braids in their hair, so what I mean, what's that? This is called Ghetto Bunny. When you burn your hair, when it starts frizzing. They got braids in their hair, but they need a hairdresser. What else you say, Uncle Ronnie? Basically, we should firm up a little early in the game and waiting until he has to blow up. 
He makes his own decisions. Conditions, this they act like I'm getting paid sixty thousand dollars or something. I'm just saying all this, all this trying to be business, talking about conditions and this is the conditions we conditions for what? I mean, hey Neb, if y'all gonna come, y'all gonna have to let us know some. We hey, gotta know today for back. sure. They still have a production contract with Warren. I, I mean, I don't. You let them out of the contract. Yeah. If they really want to get out, bye. Well, let's ask them again. I ain't again. about holding nobody. That's that's what it is about me. We work, we work the same way. If, 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 if I ain't going to work with you, what's the use of me holding you? Still, there's another <laughs> difference, and there's I'll another difference. I'll let you difference. go. Yeah. It ain't no thing to me, because you're not making me or breaking me. The music industry break. If When you come in as friends, it, it breaks you up. It breaks you up. Got them five sweeties in their pocket. It ain't them. It's a man. Well, he twisting their ass up. You just tell us what what you want, and let's get on with this tour. And I'm and, and incidentally, Gil, you're not holding the tour up because we did our first night last night. And blue. And it was the shit. <laughs> That's Ron G at his best, baby. At his best. That's why my business is taken care of so swell. All right, y'all. Ready to go. You know what I'm saying? I got homies that gang bang, got uncles that bang, I got... It's just, I'm gang related. Even if I don't gang bang, my mama live in a gang related neighborhood, so when I go through that hood, I'm gonna say, what's happening, cuz? And I'm treated as a gang member, so I'm gang related. It doesn't have to come from the East Coast or the West Coast, so that means, on that note, put your hands together for my people, Snoop Dogg and the Dog Pound! Put your motherfucking hands in the air and your dog Because it's all about thinking. If they pump you up like Lil Johnny, you can 
You could be a lawyer or a basketball player. That's going to make you want to do that. You know what I'm saying? It's only the truth. And we just tell the, the kids and shit as far as our music is concerned from where we grew up is that you could be whatever you want to be, but the life that we had to live was out there, it was rough, it was hustling, it was gangbanging, it was it was out there. There ain't nothing we could do to change it, but that's how we lived, and we trying to figure out how can we change it by expressing it, letting y'all know that we done did it already. So, I mean, save yourself and don't go through that shit. Yeah, it's cool, you know what I'm saying, man? I mean, I'm sure everybody's upset about it. It's like everybody wants to say, um, yo, We've seen it, we lived it, and we ain't having it. That's what they want the rappers is really saying. You know, they try to represent their neighborhoods, whatever. But we all seen it, we all lived it, and we all ain't having it. And now we got to move on to something else. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, everything gonna be next man. I carry a bazooka. Next man, I got a tank. <laughs> you know, all that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Trying to diss nobody, but you know, got to move on. You know what I'm saying? Cause shit. We front in front of our, friend, our, our homeboys, but we still got to go home to Mom Dukes, you know what I'm saying? You can't front around Mom Dukes 24-7. Yo, Mom, what up? You know what I'm saying? Put the stash away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got respect for their parents, you know what I'm saying? We gangsters. We gangsters. We all do the same type of shit. It's something about being a dog pound gangsta. Claiming DPG for life. That gangster shit, that shit that the bust ass niggas talk about doing, want to do. Act like they can do, but no, they can't do it. You know what I'm saying? It's like this. We ain't preaching about doing no hellified ass shit. We just speaking the real straight from the heart. All the shit we talk about is real. I mean, it's not like I got a problem with gangster rappers, because sometimes they're telling their life the way they, you know, it's all they see. See, you it's know, the other thing is... And it's informative. It's helpful. But when other people come along and they just do it because they think that's the, their ticket, Motherfuckers don't give a fuck about nothing. You know what I'm saying? They just want to make some records, make some money. Yeah, I mean, that's our clique. You know what I'm saying? There's a distinction, you know? Like, when we when we say dog pound, dog pound can mean, mean all of our homies. But when we on record, we represent all of our homies. You know what I'm saying? This this is the dog pound right here, gangsters. We we, we the group. You know what I'm saying? Me and Dad. Homies just putting it down. Yeah, we the ones that put it down on the mic. For the chemistry, they click. For as him and Snoop and him and Daz, they all became like brothers. And it is, you know, join in and break <coughs> each other, made some shit happen. Yep. And for us, you know, I ain't with that Hollywood shit. I like these little niggas because they gangsters. You know what I'm saying? They ain't with all that punk shit. They don't care about trying to have their hair done a certain way. They ain't caring, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Trying to be all on cameras. They just put their shit down. Right. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Dre came and reinvented rap from a West Coast standpoint and took that rock and roll energy that the East Coast had and took it somewhere way else. And then Suge Knight came along and got with Dre and they went and got the money they're supposed to get, the position and the company. So they, now they, got the, they own the company and own the, 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 their end of the business and it's like everybody can look at them and be inspired because it's just Suge Knight, just a street nigga with all that energy, that raw energy and, and street smarts, you know, and, and took those smarts and, and, and beat everybody at their own game. So. I can't say much about Death Row Records, uh, Dre and Suge Knight, except, you know, I'm on their deck. Crew Up and Daz is the dog pound group rappers, you know what I'm saying? They stepping out on the front to maintain and represent the whole clique as far as rap-wise. 
They voice, they're the voices out there, you know what I'm saying? They are soldiers out there on the front line representing, speaking the real for us. I'm Snoop Dogg, I represent, what I represent is the whole dog pound is one, but we all is one. It ain't no such sections as, okay, you niggas run like this, nigga, we all one. We all family, nigga, just got different titles and different job duties, but we all have them. What would you do if you could fuck with my crew? You can get with the dog pound. Everybody wants to be your dog pound gangster. I'm in the How'd y'all get? How'd y'all hook up? Snoop Dogg, baby! TCG! I know why. Uh, the love is the one they said. Me! Black ass. Woo! Them niggas, them niggas straight said that, um. That I bit they shit in. Oh. What's up, big dog? See you all in the motherfucking uh, What's up, calendar, cuz. What's up, Calendar tight. Calendar tight. Tight. What's up, Smoke? I said, that's Nate Dog. What the fuck? Everybody in the dog pound got equal criticism, like, meaning from the youngest to the oldest. If the youngest was to say, dog, that shit ain't hitting, change that shit, he got that love to make a nigga change it. I'm just saying, as far as the respect of everybody in the dog pound, that's what we need to address. There ain't no such thing as a leader or... You know, nigga get all the praises. Nigga, we all individuals. We all treated as men. It's, you know what I'm saying? On that page with respect. Everybody get that same respect. Dog pound, hell y'all bitch. Hey, y'all bitch. Mm-hmm. Uh. D P D P G D P D P D P G I oughta to start dipping, sipping on that SD, gets me to tripping, I don't slip the bang. Get that mad ass all pound gang, it's a DPG thing. Come up from the SC, you wanna test me, let's see if you'll survive 45 times. Like a hollow point headed for your dome, take a couple steps, turn around and it's on you. And we'll stare the murderous mental eye to do, and then take two to your ten win. When I call solo I call from what's written, uh. make us collapse and when the straps is spitting. Uh -huh. Look, this is how it's done, one, two, three. See it's sort of just for gun. Uh -huh. Know the pump, uh, come up uh, the king, pin uh, on the click, little with G, with the biggest G. Yeah. The motherfucker better recognize. Yeah. Yeah. With the twist on my wrist, like I'll tell you all. Yeah. 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 I stack the motherfuckers yeah. like a bone. Yeah. Don't be the shit, I'm on a microphone yeah. ever since I was born. Not to ever love a bitch. Yeah. Shirt gang, not the game. That's why we yeah. all about to see yeah. many be making style, minute after minute. But as soon as you did, I snuck your ass shit. Yeah. Motherfucker, yeah. what would you do? What would you do? Yeah. What would you do? You can fuck with me or my crew, uh -huh. but you can't yeah. don't even think about uh -huh. stepping yeah. in the motherfucking yeah. yeah. What would you, you want to do if you can fuck with me or my crew? Uh -huh. You can't yeah. so don't even think about stepping in the motherfucking hey. house. You think you can rap, you come around here with all that bullshit thinking that that bro, you know what I'm saying, or they can't really root, root, root. I serve them off the top. They get served. Like the West Coast, they tell a story that East Coast don't go through. You know what I'm saying? You have your shootings out here, your killings, your wildness, your buck wild, all this. But out there, it's a different mentality. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole different mentality. And a lot of people, when they first start hearing West Coast groups from out here, they thought, oh, they just exaggerating. It can't be that bad out there until you go out there and you see what's going on out there. Any more times of this humiliation? How many more battles do we have to lose while we fight for our rights in this nation? That we supposed to have since birth, but the breaks and the bricks get worse. So it's jail first. And that's all they offer us. Ain't that right, Mr. Officer? The chain remains. The chain remains. The chain remains. But you know, it's all founded around here. You know, this like, you look up there, this William and North 14th, down there, 15th Street, right? This block here is where Vin grew up. Seven kids lived in a two-bedroom house, you know? Two-bedroom apartment. And to those other MCs, naughty by nature for nigga, please. We just took the time to form three companies. Now the whole industry awaits the new recital. I take your favorite idol. I crumple up the title in the face. Cause I'm fed up with that same old crap. Lack of developing your crew. That's why your stage shows right. So let the sleeping and the swimming in. I can't hear myself. We really started sticking every day, like around the eighth and ninth grade. Yeah. So that's when we really just formed up. Like back in the new style days when we first formed the new style group. <laughs> this is, this is, 
This is new style. <laughs> it's the house where it all started, the headquarters. You might remember this house from Ghetto Bastard. Everything's going to be all right video. It's KG's home. This is the Gist family house. And this is where it all started. We was making noise all up in K room. Miss Gist and, and Mr. Gist up there just letting us do our thing, feeling our vibes and everything that came up from way back in the days with the new style era, all that, you know what I'm saying, came from in this house. All the crates of records, the beat machines. We wrote OPP in that house right there. Came up with the whole concept, the idea around it and everything. So this is why we love this and ain't leaving this for nothing. You know what I'm saying? This is the foundation here. This is what started it all. Yeah, still there. I ain't going nowhere. It's all right here. It's all good in the hood. All good in the hood. Through hip-hop, that's really like the only way to let, you know, the rest of the country know what's going on, like, over in your own neighborhood or whatever. Or basically, when we, when you, what we talk about on the record is we talking about the, like, around, about our neighborhood. We speaking for the people around there. It's not like we just going on records and cursing or talking this or talking that. It's a message in every record. They go L town finest right there. Police alert. And it's song. Hey! You know, when they say fuck the police, it doesn't mean that they hate the police. It means there's a resentment in the community and that maybe the police police themselves. Yeah, we went to 92 to be kicking it, you know what I'm saying, for like two hours. I just got off a flight five hours from Jersey. Get there, get off, do the interview two and a half hours, leave, you know what I'm saying? Me and Havoc just kicking it, you know what I'm saying? Listening to tapes, jamming, cooling. Look in the rear view, whoop, whoop, pulled over. Like, what's up? They come, get out the car. One, you on the, the driver. Park, take out the key, get out. This and that and the other. You next. Get out, this and that. Looking at me, where you from? What gang you in? What you doing out this? What is this and that and the other? Where you? I'm like, you just come from the radio station. Radio station? What radio station? 92 to beat. People riding by honking. Hey, hey, ah. So then that's when they really calm down. Before, we got frisked. You know what I'm saying? My nuts all touched by some nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That shit was, it, they just played us out. It just fucked up the whole night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fucked up the yeah, whole like, vibe. So they made yeah. you get out the car. And out the day. car. Out the car. LAPD. Interlock your fingers behind your head. You know what I'm saying? People riding by, you just, you know what I'm saying? Just got off the radio station giving advice. I was looking for some advice after that shit. <laughs> Even when in Texas, we don't get trooping. That's when I find the baddest brothers in Houston boosted. Break down, fill the party. And then 12 bars after that, let me hear my man. I'm saying, well, you just squeeze it to 12. We'll just do, do some dissecting. Clap your hands this evening. Yeah, it's alright. Clap your hands this evening. He should be coming in right here. Turn me up a little bit up in my um shits. Check it out, I gotta hear myself, I gotta hear myself, I gotta hear myself. I gotta release, release, release ten tension. Come, 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 come again, I got to mention. Freestyle, free flow, off the dome, once again you know. Now here we go. Falling through the earth with a burst first for ya. Clapping your hands, now we must say a rough, for sure. But I am still thirsty, oh mercy, it's worthy. Come thirsty, oh curse me, it's Jersey. If you really want to find out what's going on in the hood, you really want to find out what's going on in the ghettos, all you have to do is tune in to hip-hop. Naughty by Nature is, not, is, is nothing without, you know, 18th Street, without East Orange, without Ill Town. Ill Town created us. We are Ill Town. We're just products of Ill Town. And that's basically what we're representing. This is how we do it here. I got barbarians to regard me in, in a club that part we went. A broad got thrown like a part of his own. And can do it abroad, a brim is broke. To the back, I'm bad and brave for praise for broke. The boots were the burnt bamboo, shake the loot. Yeah. Let's get down here. Yeah. True.
take the soap, give it all. Come on. Then we get my phone. What's that? Yeah. We heard that boots on is going like a movement, and there's like 150 members all together, and you have some sort of music. I got an answer for that. Wu-Tang Clan rocks the world. Uh, All right, Wu Tang Clan rocks the world. We gonna have Wu Tang out here as soon as we us being out here for these little three days right here. By the time we leave, we gonna have like 50 Wu Tang members here. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna keep spreading. I mean, our numbers grow every day. <laughs> ドーンとなった花火焚きで痛んな星一つないこの祭典な東京の夜空めがけ唾吐けば男にヒットそこで一気ひねり出そうで乳離陸前天生は下がりっぱなしちょっと気取って呟いてみかぼうし耳開けて
struggle everywhere, man. But where I'm from, Park Hill, I can tell you about Park Hill. Park Hill like this to me, man. You come out on the block, you never know what the fuck's gonna happen. Anything can happen. Like, 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 you could play, you could play ball all fucking day, get sweaty and shit, then later on that night... kill that shit, man. What? You know what I'm saying? Shit, anybody wanna hear that shit? Y'all niggas is still worthless, boy. Y'all been fucking playing me for this whole fucking shit just cause the fucking camera's on. Y'all cut sit that down, shit out, man. Niggas. My mom sent me to school. You know what I'm saying? I never got, couldn't really get fresh and shit. Everybody get fresh. The Easter and all that shit. Nigga had like two pair of pants and shit. I gotta wear one pair like two or three times straight or whatever and change to the next one or whatever and shit. They don't say that shit. I don't give a fuck. I be do that shit any other motherfucking time. I'm like, saying like this, y'all brothers. I don't give a fuck who's around. around. Check this out. Whenever it come down this camera shit, y'all niggas get on some bullshit. Yo, I'm God, take it's it, like this. Now I'm taking it back to Arsenio. God, we is that all? No, fuck that. No, 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 no. My name was on the paper to say the rhyme or whatever, right? Right? Was it? Was it? Was it not? Niggas hurt my feelings on some. That nigga, fuck that. How come he always got That's to do right. blase blah and this and that? But, listen, what? What? we was in London. My name was on the paper on some Method Man and three other band members do the interviews. Yeah. I ain't hear nobody, why that nigga got to do all that? No, uh-uh. Nigga stayed shit. in they bags, slept, while I went to the radio the station by right. my fucking self. Yeah. I went up to RCA to Germany by myself. You went there three so motherfucking what? other what? times. Right? You, don't three, four, you don't know four, four, what you talking about. You don't know what you talking about. Your ass, ass sat, your ass right? sat in the fucking radio station in the other side on the fucking phone talking like to some hoe while we in there doing fucking some fucking shit. I'm trying to get my shit, nigga. What, what shit? fuck you talking about? My motherfucking church, nigga, that's still out fucking London. Bitch-ass motherfucker. You trying to get your shirt. That's right, motherfucker. While we was in there busting our ass, and you got paid to, on the right. other phone so trying to get your fucking shirt. When I was doing the interviews, who was doing all the fucking talking? You was, as usual. You fucking sit up there and talk, talk, because talk, Because look at the asses you give. Talk, talk, Look at the asses you give. Got no draw, right? <laughs> None. 
This nigga know, too. Fuck right. <laughs> all the cosmetic rap shit. Y'all niggas want the pain? <laughs> yeah, motherfuckers! Yeah. Want the pain? They just don't want the pain. Y'all niggas don't want it. If y'all want the pain, let me hear you say hell yeah. yeah. I got you, baby. Say hell yeah. Say fuck yeah. Say shit yeah. Just make sure my mic is all the way up. If y'all with me, everybody sing along. I came to bring the pain. All over the brain. Let's go inside. My ass to play. But I'm a bitch. No place to live. Blessing overtook us. We didn't overtake it. It just came and like oh, engulfed us and grabbed us and took us to stardom, and that was it. I used to. I don't. Uh, I ain't fucking with you. This man D used to come and they had record ideas and all that, and I just finished school. And I said finished school, thinking I ain't gonna fuck with him. Niggas gonna be up. And then he, you know, people around me start telling me, you know, fuck with your brother. He's right with his shit, and fuck with DMC because he's right. And, and so it came together, and then Jay came along, and they became Run DMC. To us, they like the, the, the George Clintons to our parents, and you know what I'm saying? Like, they, when we were little and not even in the game, in the rap, just more just fans of all the whole thing, they were like the gods of the rap. They, like, took it to that next level that made hip-hop more mainstream and out there, you know what I'm saying? They took it to the level where it could be as commercial as it is today. So if you diss running them, man, you dissing hip-hop. Names was always L, coming up with names. And then Russell called and said, the name of your group is going to be Run DMC. But see, now, right now, when I'm saying that, it sounds deaf, because Run DMC is the household word. It sounds the whole Run DMC. But imagine that name never existed on the earth. And you're standing there, and, and your manager calls and says, the name of your group is going to be Run DMC. He knows his name was D to MC, and Run was DJ Run, the son of Curtis Blow. So that's what it was, DJ Run and D to MC, DMC. And that's so, it was easy, Run DMC. I just seen Joe's face cringe. And then he said, here, take the phone. I'm like, what? He gave me the phone, and he said, D, the name of the group is Run DMC. And I still remember that day in Larry Attic. I was standing there, and he said, run DMC, and it was the worst, stupidest thing I ever heard. And At that time, it was most important to us to do shit that was very simple and real. And early in our career, it was always something like that going on. Rusty, you're trying to ruin us. They're trying to ruin us. They're trying to ruin us. Even with Rockbox, when they put the guitars on it, oh, they're trying to ruin us. Our whole thing was let's try to be real, and the realest thing that you could do 
was just put a drum beat with nothing but a drum beat. So a record like Suck MC, and also loud, you know. And so we wanted guitars because we would always scratch guitars, but not scratch guitar riffs, just the noise. <clears throat> you know, that whole, you know, you cut the beat and you give it dynamics. And that was a loud shit. We was coming up, man. Rap was everything. Rap was, if you, you know, you go to school, you go to high school, you go to the cafeteria, they beating on the tables and the kid like runners running his mouth all the time. You go everywhere, anytime I, I was a DJ, anytime I bring my turntables out in the park, there'd be 15, at least 10 of them MCs from the neighborhood that were actually almost near this fight for the mic. You know, it was just like they had to have the mic. It was like a, a, a drug or something. I love for them niggas, period. That's from being in the game. I mean, I grew up to that shit. When my mom got me a radio for Christmas, she got me a Fat Boys tape and a Run DMC tape. That's all I had. I'm going to slow it down on the real ill B-boy. Catch your heart from back in the day, Jam, and bug your whole life out, make you go home, smack yourself in the back of the head, put your hands up like this. We're going to go from side to side. Everybody that's with old school hip-hop and know about Run DMC from way back and know we going to do... You don't even know what we're going to do next. We got so many hits. Put your hands in there, everybody, like this. We're going to get for the sky. We're going to do it like this. What's my name? What's my name? Run. What's my name? Run. What'd you say? Run. That's cool. Now, put your hands back in there. Come on, don't front on it, nigga. We're going to go from side to side on a real slow tip, and everybody got to repeat after me real loud. Over there, too, y'all peepers. Oh, crazy like on the real old school tip. Old school is groups that made a difference in hip hop pre recording. There were a whole slew of groups, underground groups. We call them local bands that were known just around in New York City, like Cool Hurt, uh, Bambada, Grandmaster Hollywood. Flash, Mario. You can't forget DJ Hollywood. 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 Mario. Uh, Eddie Chiba, Love Fuck Stars. Right. Check this out. Wait a minute. Cold Crush. For the one that you brothers. can't forget DJ Hollywood. And a lot of brothers right. do be doing forgetting yeah, DJ true. Hollywood. When you're talking about old school, didn't make a record and making a difference, for me, nobody commended the crowd better than DJ Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and not get on wax. So that's important. He's the first nigga to say hip-hop. And Big Bang Hank was a fake Hollywood, and he know it. And everybody knows that everybody who came after Hollywood when it used to be the House of Joy and Fun Club 371, it was DJ Hollywood was the headliner. Before we made our first records, we were rapping five and six years in the clubs, in the block parties, on the streets. You know what I'm saying? Run used to go around to every block party in Queens and rock on the microphone. So he had the experience to handling an audience. You go to the gym, say Russell Simmons, he'll throw a party, you go there, Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five performing, DJ Hollywood, somebody will sneak a tape in or somebody will get a tape up in the DJ booth and you make the tape, you tape the show, bring it out in the street, sell it six to ten dollars. A lot of tapes were sold like that. My first tape I brought was the Cold Crush tape, six dollars, I paid for it, and it was like an album to me. Rap has always been here. For many years, when God talked to Moses and any of the prophets, he was rapping with them. Um, if you look at the 30s and the 20s, with Cap Calloway, Hottie Hottie Out of Hove, with the bebop, they was also having their style of rap. If you look at the dozens, when you talk about your mama or your papa, that was dealing with rap. Who are the real creators of hip-hop is a toss-up between the bourgeoisie disco hip-hoppers and the hardcore b-boy hip-hoppers of the Bronx. This is some trivia for y'all. What MC, what MC made up the terminology, yes, yes, y'all? Nothing. Nope. Nope. You tell us, oh, great one. <laughs> and right here, there, boy. Kid Creole. Kid Creole. That's right. He made up the terminology, yes, yes, y'all. He, he made that up. Just, just a bridge from rhyme to rhyme. Once I said a rhyme, in order to get to the next rhyme, every, yes, yes, y'all. Every, to the every bridge, MC to that the ever y'all. said a rhyme said, yes, yes, y'all. Y'all owe this boy money. He wanted money. Everybody. All right. <laughs> the most exciting day of my life, to this day still, there got to be another one coming. Was going, was, was being up to, it got to be another one coming as big as that because I've been telling this same story forever. 
was being at the garden in 87 and um it was sold out 20,000 people they came to the garden full of confidence with hot records and they came and did their thing remember run walking on the stage and talk about they wouldn't let him in at first he said i beg your pardon but this is my motherfucking garden yeah, I talked about, yeah, yeah, okay, I beg your pardon, but this is my and my effing garden, and I came out, you know, did my thing, but the ill part about it was that I told everybody to put their Adidas sneaker in the air. They pull up a sneaker, and said, my Adidas, my Adidas, my Adidas. And it was like 20,000 people took their sneakers off and put it in the air. We was up to like 3 million albums then. I was already excited about that, being up to 3 million albums. And I said, yo, everybody put your, um, your sneaker in the air, and everybody had no shoestrings in them, so it was easy to take them off. So they take the sneaker off and they put it in the air and the, the guy from um, Adidas, the representative, when I got off stage, he told me that I was going to have my own line of Adidas sneakers. Now check this out. Throw that back over there. We're going to get busy. I'm ready to go to the next level. Y'all ready to go to the next level? We're going to do it like this. D, what's this right here? Yo, this is my black shirt. You mess around and get hurt. What's this under there? Yo, this is my black belt. I whip them seeds and I give them whelps. What's this on your leg? Yo, these are my black pants. I beat you down if I get the chance. Do me one favor. What? What, what the fuck are these, man? Right there. Right there, not Jamel. What's up, nigga? Chris. What's going on? What's up, man? Jay, he gonna play with us. He's good. Yeah. So do y'all got five good players? Yeah, we got five. we gonna be real. Damn, this nigga ain't on my squad? When you listen to this, you know what I'm saying? Why would he even say the word easy? You know what I'm saying? When he say easy, you think of easy listening. This, this is music is ill. But what makes it the most interesting to me about the whole thing is he's Dr. Dre's little brother. That takes my mind to a whole nother realm when I think. So, Dr. Dre's selling millions, and you were supposed to have Snoop, from what I understand. Snoop was your man, so Dre took him and put him out, and you, wait, you, you waited in the boondocks. And now they got to give stuff. him his. Summer 92, you know. It was about 20 guys staying at my house at the time. You know, Snoop, Warren, all the guys just, um, that were on the chronic, that were involved in that album. And when I would stop in the studio, they would go down there and start, you know, fucking around with the drum machines and shit, you know, they had the shit cranking all night, learning the shit, you know. I would come in and show him a few things every now and then, but he basically picked it up on his own, you know. And that's like, like I was telling you, I don't know, the motherfucker was going to be two million copies a couple of years later. I'd have been down there a little bit more, you know. <laughs> you could tell that the same person was making... That funny sound. Same person was not the only the sound was playing it. The snare that the drum machine. It was the same thing going on, you know what I'm saying? It's just like you and your brother, you know? Yeah, but that's I, how people were saying How are you gonna have Russell Simmons managing all these people and run being down? It's the main rapper. Hey, I am worried about how how Dre Dre and Dre it's, it's, it's Warren G's older brother and yeah. I got Russell doing what he do. There you go. He had developed his own style, he didn't, you know, didn't didn't use none of the shit that I that I do, you know, none of my sounds or none of that shit. He just came out and did his own thing, came up with his own shit, which is dope. 
show. I got y'all too much money not watching the game. I know what his point was. You what his point was, 800. No. You bet on 6 was picking up. What point was 5 Trey? He won't 5 Trey. That he had just hit 5 4 to pick up his money. He never, he never. That's his point was 5. You said he was talking about his point was 5 when it was 4 1. And he hit 9. But then he rolled a 9 for his point. And we bet it. Then Homer said, let's bet 5 and 9 too. We picked up on that money. Nigga, I bet on the 5. I bet on the 5. I picked up. I don't know what they say over the money, I know that. I know it's motherfucking point, nigga. I know what the hell I bet it. Hello? Conjunction, junction, yeah. what's my function? All right, start again from the top. Slick Rick. Slick Rick. Hey, Young World. Young World. All right, Children's Story. Children's Story. Teenage Love. Teenage Love. I think we love. Okay. Hey, for Thursdays, I have gas days. That pays to the end. And Pop Goes the Weasel. You hear a lot of stuff about Russ. You hear from every direction it is before it's... Russell come from me, I look at Russell as whoever want to whoever wanna deny it, don't want to give him his props, they got to give it to him. Russell Simmons made the way for if it's Suge, if it's Dre, if it's anybody in the hip-hop business because he started it. What's, what LL Cool J? LL Cool J has Listen to I Need a Beat, Rob the World, Rock Around the World, Rock Around the World, Rock Around I'm bad and radio. What the fuck? Is, is somebody high? That's fucking wrong. Where's, um, uh, Ladies. that list is crazy. What? I want to kill Kathy. In 1984, uh, I had sent a tape into this guy named Rick Rubin. He was the guy who gave me my break. Everybody knows him. And, uh, he introduced me to Russell at Russell's office. Uh, he had a small office down on Broadway. Me and Rick played a record for him called I Need a Beat. And uh, he really liked that record. So what happened was instead of us, instead of them taking that record and going to a distributor and trying to get it distributed and having problems with the money, they decided to form an independent company called Def Chair and put that record out. Because I know he'd be dropping a lot of a lot of knowledge to his artists, you know what I'm saying? Because he got a lot of artists. And Russell definitely knows how to make money. That's all I want to do is sit down and let's ask some questions about how I can make money. I just, let me know everything I can do to make a million, Russ, because I know you know what to do. How much is payroll? Oh, how much is all that shit equal up? I can't, I, hey, look, that's your problem, right? I mean, that's my problem, but you, you're working on it. It started out with, you know, tall, skinny bitches. Like I always, when I was in high school, looking at magazines and saying that she's fine, I want to meet this hoe. I want to meet this hoe. Then the next thing I know, I, you know, I, I've been hanging out at all the parties where you get one party and there'd be 60 girls, they'd all be six feet and fine. So that's, you know, and I guess no niggas could be mad at going there. Then after that, I met the clients and all the people who run all the department stores and buy all the clothes. And then I started looking at the fabrics and the clothes that they were making them and I start, you know, seeing how Niggas, you know, hip hop niggas influence all the shit that they try to do anyway. You know, I see Chanel, I go to Chanel show and, and Carl Lagerfeld got a big gold chain around a bitch neck. I was like, you know, how fake is that? You know, Fat Farm became like a hobby, you know, and I started making clothes and I looked at the fabrics that, and, and started to really understand the business through all the designers and the editors and the, the models. I started really, it became a real serious hobby. And that hobby became more serious as we put more money into it. Let me tell you something, when I first started hanging out with these tall girls, they wasn't playing hip-hop music in the parties. I used to feel like, you know what I'm saying, I had to have a reason to be up in that spot right. besides for some tall bitch. Because my job is to get money. And I ain't mean bitch, like, I mean worldly, sophisticated, independent, badass bitch, you know. The kind of hoes every man want to marry. You know what I'm saying? So, I didn't want to say it like, bitch, you know, because I know people will be watching this who ain't hip-hop and wait to understand when I say bitch, I mean bad bitch. You know, like, like you know, super... Super bitch, you know, super powerful, independent, successful bitch. Right. Not like no, necessarily, not at all derogatory in no way, you know what I'm saying? Because I love women, I, you know, I can't sympathize with all the rappers be talking, they hate them hoes, all that. I love girls. Thank you, daddy. <laughs> Hello? Hey, who got some gangsta gangsta shit? Some gangsta gangsta shit. You got 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 some
Or how somebody's going to come see they show and have fun. That's why right now none of them brothers could go on tour. Whereas everybody here went on big tours, you know, no and, and thirty happened. cities tours. Yeah, they can't go on tour because don't nobody want the rap in the building. You don't know what it's like to go platinum and sit home. You have new guys who come out. They go platinum. They've never seen twenty thousand people, That's or right. ten thousand people, people, or one thousand people, or one hundred people. Yeah. The difference between what we did and what they're doing now. It was a form of entertainment. When you right. came in the concert right. Right. and you exactly. see, like, if you right. see a Run exactly. DMC show, or you see a Houdini show, or you see a Curtis Blow show, you seeing a show. You yeah. see a Grand right. After Flash show. You seeing a show. Same you see these right. boys right, right now. Point. You see just a brother off on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 And, 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 and that, and that ain't pulling. That ain't pulling no weight. Back in the day, in 1976, when I started rapping, I was in a group called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and even though. Like things were rugged and things were tough, we felt like there was an opportunity for us to be successful. So people would make raps that are different from today. Like people would make raps. Like I made a record called Getting Money. Everything's funny when you get money. Because I felt like there was an opportunity to get money. Now rappers are making smash hits like Bring the Pain. Because people feel like they're growing up in a time where there's no system for them to figure out how to get money. So I think that. I was born in 1960, so I might have been the last generation of the affirmative action rap group. And now you got Reaganomic rap groups. And Reaganomics took away after school programs, took away summer jobs, took away student loans. So you got a whole generation of rappers who are growing up under the auspices of Generation X who grew up with no hope, and all they see is pain. Living up to what you see on records, it's all entertainment. Anybody in their fucking right mind know you could talk about shooting somebody on the record, but motherfucker ain't finna really go out there and do it unless you just stupid. You know what I'm saying? It's this entertainment, you know? We make records. It's entertainment. That's all it is. This is like our fucking jobs, you know? There'd be always one motherfucker that'll do some shit, like throw some shit on stage. I remember, man, this nigga threw some shit on stage, man. And you know, we roll with the fort. Niggas just like zoomed in, whoop, right off the stage. Niggas just whipped his ass right the fuck out the arena. Came back on, we just finished the show and shit. Like it used to pop off like that often. It'd be like, nigga, fuck them niggas. And then you turn around like, what? They all. Yeah, like that. And then, that, then we'd be like, who, who said that shit? And then the whole crowd be like, him, him. Oh, we all love these niggas up, so these niggas up. Besides selling the records, you know, artists get their money from their shows. You got a tight ass show, niggas don't want to see you. So, me and Puff just tried to make the tightest show we could for me. He makes um, Biggie Smalls and Craig Max flavor in your ear. All those records are his. 
I had to call my protege, but he's selling more records than me right now. So I, I, got, I got a new name for the nigga now. Bad Boy Entertainment, you know what I'm saying? We just did Mary J. Blige, Joe C. when I was at Uptown Falling City Heavy D. Now we got the Notorious Big, Craig Mack. A lot of new acts coming out. This is on TLC. Trying to make some noise in New York Black Company. Bad Boy for Life, you know what I'm saying? Anything we could do to get the crowd crazy, anything we could do, we'd just do it. If I wasn't such a big nigga, I'd have been jumping in the crowd too. But I ain't really with that extracurricular shit. I've listened to Juicy. I was a part of Juicy. Um, and Big Papa. Big Papa I like. Big Papa I like. The Hip hop to me is way out. You know what I'm saying? It's like, just imagine. Just look at all the fucking rappers out there, all the all the motherfuckers that's doing hip hop music, and and ask them what would they be doing if they, if hip hop never came around. You have a lot of dead motherfuckers. You have a lot of broke motherfuckers out there, because there's a lot of motherfuckers out there trying to get into hip hop or are already in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So it's a way out. It's fucking opportunity. You know what I'm saying? It's um, fucking big business. The things nowadays that are make me happiest, besides for the things I can buy, and the other shit that comes along with people's conventional idea of what will make them happy. If I get a little paper, and I can hire a nigga straight out of jail, somebody I grew up with, which we do all the time, friends we help, you know, and they become successful, and they get this shit on, and I see that, or if I find an artist who just came out and the nigga's really hard working, really has a vision, and believes in himself, and is trying and trying, and suddenly I give this man a contract, and he blows up, he's on the cover of Rolling Stone, and he's gonna have little rich black babies, then that kind of thing means a lot to me now more than, you know, and it didn't, I didn't realize how much I appreciate seeing those things happen. You in this shit now, the motherfuckers is telling you be here and there and that and there. You gotta establish a type of relationship with them where you know that they work for you. You don't work for them. You know what I'm saying? Everything that you do is for you. So every move that you make, make sure it's all out because it's going to matter in the end and shit. But right now, rap is in its proper position and it's it's open doors. It, 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 it opened doors for Run DMC and Run DMC opened doors for people and now the people that followed after Run DMC are still opening doors. Hip-hop is young pop culture. 
like young pop culture with rock, like young pop culture with jazz, with blues. Young pop culture then was young black culture too. But the difference in hip hop is that young niggas is on the screen selling hip hop. The reason why we make these records, we're crying out about our environment, we're crying out about our system. So now that, you know, you can appeal to a million, five, two million, three million people, telling them about your environment, after a point it's not like you just take the benefits of it and just chill and live in a fat house or have fat cars and have all the women and never mind the rest of your environment. It's up to you, you know, your environment made you, now it's up to you to give back to the community. Rap has become and a device of expression now, more or less. When we did it, we came out, it was just fun. You know, to this day, if we wasn't making records, we'd still have to get together and go in Hollis Park and throw a party. You know, I'd still be writing rhymes. If I was working at the post office, I'd have a book of rhymes. And um, today, rappers are just talking about what they're allowed to talk about, to express themselves musically. You know what? There's one thing right now I want to say again. There's one thing I find amazing. That I've been here since 1982. I think before some little girl over there was even born. And they still call me out to do this movie. And to go on last after the likes of Wu-Tang and Biggie Smalls and Craig Mack. And these kids were kids when I was doing this. And I, I'm just thankful, right, that I can still be able to come out here 12 years later and be able to do this and get support from people like y'all. So yeah. I want to ask y'all one question. I want everybody to get silent for me one minute in here. Everybody just shut up for a second. How many people out there down with the old school know about Run DMC? Put a hand in the air. If you're from the old school, get up from your heart. And you see Run DMC getting busy before, put a hand in the air like this. For all the old school from way, way back and know about that. That's where all this new school comes from, the old school. Now check this out. For all the true hip hop fans out there, I'ma do a little something like this. This is my nigga right here. He go by the name of DMC, that's your Mr. J. We gonna do it like this. Now DJ Rock! Yeah, you gotta let him know, you gotta let him know. You don't think they know? I don't think they know, Cho. I gotta take them back then. Alice Crew style for sure, this is real. If it's ever been real, these turntables is on, ain't no dat. Use a dat, you get this. It's either this or that. We're gonna do it like this. One, two, one, two. Now DJ runs my name. Jam Master J It's his. He's the MC. It's like that. And that's the way it is. Book me out, wreck it. see a problem. You can hate your enemy, but that don't mean you got to, you know what I'm saying, go at him with a gun and all that. You just got to know how to give him the water to change his eye, his, his way of life, or whatever the case, you know, to so your benefit and grow. So it's 
all about the whole world coming together. That's maybe why rap is like that. Rap is not singing and all that. Rap is just straight out talking. And maybe that's why it's like, maybe that was what God wanted to happen. Maybe he just wants the whole world to hear somebody say, y'all, what's going on? Straighten up. Yo, what's up? Yo. You ready, son? Drop kids one time. Boom. Woo. Uh -huh. Boom. Say what? When I met you, I admit my first thought was a trick. Hands in the so good. Woo. I suck on your daddy's dick. I never felt that way in my life. Right. It didn't take long before I made you my wife. Got no rings, this yeah. is just my main squeeze. Coming to the crib, even had a set of keys. That's right. During the day, she helped me back up my nickel. Come on. In the process, I admit, I tricked a little. But you was my bitch, the one who never slipped. That's right. Help me when I'm broke or when I'm filthy fucking rich. And I admit, when the time is right, the wine is right, I treat you right. You talk slip, I beat you just right. Me and my bitch, all me and my bitch, all just me and my bitch. Yeah. 